thanks for joining me today. Today I'd like to demonstrate printing with thickened print paste and fiber reactive dyes. I have another video, which if you have not watched, you should check it out, where I'm actually making this print paste. The print paste is made from sodium alginate, and the sodium alginate is a seaweed derivative, and it thickens. It's added to hot water, and I've also added a little urea to this, which is a humectant, because it helps the, the fabric stay damp longer so that the dyes can react. I have the plain print paste in these three cups, and you'll notice I don't have very much print paste in the cup, and that's because it doesn't take very much dye or paste if you're only printing something small. Now, in order to activate the print paste, I have to add soda ash to it. And so here I have a container of soda ash that has been mixed 50-50 with regular baking soda. The baking soda helps slow down the reaction time, but the soda ash is necessary because it's the fixative that allows the dye molecules to bind to the fiber molecules or the cloth molecules in order to make a permanent color. So I mix this up in advance by putting a cup of soda ash and a cup of baking soda together, and then I just stir it up with a spoon. When I'm ready to activate the print paste, I add, it's about a teaspoon, doesn't need to be exact. I add that to my cup, and I'm going to stir that up so that it will dissolve. Now, this is important to know. When I've added the soda ash to the print paste, we refer to that as being activated print paste. And that's because when I add the dye to this, and then I start printing it on the fabric, I'll have all of the components I need, all the parts of the equation, to make the print permanent on the fabric. But there's another important thing to know, which is that when I add the dye to the activated print paste, the soda ash interacts with the dye and the exhaustion process begins. And what the exhaustion process, what that means, is that when the soda ash has been added to the dye, eventually, over time, it compromises the dye's ability to create the color. So I wouldn't want to activate a big bunch of soda, uh, of print paste with soda ash and then add dye to it if I wasn't going to use it all right away because it would go to waste. When you add the dye to this activated print paste, you have about four hours, maybe a little bit longer, to do your printing without losing color. But if I let these cups of dye sit on the counter and I come back tomorrow, it won't be, it'll be weak and I won't be able to get the full color that I could have gotten if I had printed sooner when the dye was fresh. Now, this is important to know too. A lot of the time, people are taught to take their fabric and put it in a big bucket of soda ash and water and then just wring it out and let it dry in order to activate the fabric. But that's a bad idea because they, they do it because they think then they don't have to add the soda ash to the dye and that means that the dye and the print paste will last longer, which is basically true. But if I already have soda ash on a piece of fabric and it's been soaked and dried, then I'm setting up a playground where all of the migrant dye can go. The migrant dye is the dye molecule that doesn't attach because sometimes maybe you've printed too much or you have too much dye in the solution. There are a lot of reasons that, that, that this can happen, but the most important thing to understand is that I have those little bits of dye that are walking around that aren't connected to anything, and when I put them down on fabric that already has soda ash on it, it's like they have this huge playground. They can play anywhere they want on the fabric, and they can attach anywhere they want on the fabric because there's already soda ash in the fabric. So you don't want to invite those little migrant dye molecules to wander on your fabric and attach anywhere they want because that's how you get bleeding and that's how you get spotting. So it's a much better idea to learn to mix very small amounts of dye and print paste and then try to use up everything using the activated paste because then I don't have that playground over here on my fabric. I have fabric where the only place the dye can actually attach is where I have printed it because that's the only place the soda ash has been added to the fabric. So, with no further ado, I'm going to add a little bit of, let's see, let's do that again. I'm going to add some soda ash to this cup. We'll work with three colors today. I'm going to add soda ash to this cup. And then I'll add the dye to these three cups. 
Now, so far, we haven't used anything that presents a health hazard. Soda ash is the same stuff that we use in hot tubs and pools to affect the pH level. But when we get around here to the dye, then it's a different story. The dyes aren't really, the fiber reactive MX dyes are not considered toxic, but they are a powder. And that powder can easily disperse into the air and then get into your lungs because you breathe it, which is why it's important to have a mask. So I'm gonna add this mask to my repertoire here, put it on, you won't be able to hear me because I can't talk through the mask. And I'm gonna add bits of dye, about a teaspoon, to these cups here, and then I'll stir that up. Okay, so I have my dyes mixed up here in my cups. And today I'm printing with an intense blue, golden yellow, and deep navy. And these are colors from ProChem, a company on the East Coast that I think of very highly and recommend. If you're on the West Coast, you can get dyes like this from Dharma Trading Company. And of course, if you're somewhere international, you can Google these and probably find MX dyes wherever you live because it's pretty worldwide. So what I'm going to do with the thickened dye first is to print and I'm using a Thermofax screen and these are like little silk screens. They're made on a Thermofax. If, you, if you're not familiar with Thermofax, you can look at another one of my videos. I've got eight or nine on this channel that explain Thermofaxes in detail. What I'm going to do is put down a little block of color here in the golden yellow. I'm using a squeegee to pull the color across the screen. It looks pretty great. And I'm going to put another block of that color over here. Great. And you'll notice that my fabric is pinned to the table. And I do actually have, I'm so uh, such a control freak, I've got a method for pinning the fabric to the table, and it works. All the pins are faced in all the way around, and you can see that on another YouTube video that I've, I've got for you. So I printed this, and you can see what I'm talking about, why the print paste is so important, because if the dye had not been thickened, this would all just bleed as if I had just brushed it on with a brush. But because of the print paste, it holds its line. So now I'm going to come in and superimpose. This dye is still damp but I can put another screen down on top of it as long as I'm only printing one time. If I was printing more than once, I'd probably get a ghost image because the dye will get on the back of the screen. But since it's a small piece and I'm only adding one, I'm good. The dye across the top, keep the squeegee straight up and down, pull toward myself. And there's my beautiful Lily. Now, I don't seem to have much of a problem with a ghost image on the back, so I'm actually going to add another one of these right over here. So you can see how the print paste helps keep the clarity of the image, even though this particular lily has a lot of tiny little dots. And you can also see where I have a little glitch here where I accidentally got some, there must have been a little bit of that yellow dye on, maybe it was on the back of the screen and it transferred. But you know, this is uh, the sort of process where human error can be turned into a beauty mark. So I never worry too much about little imperfections like that because I can stitch over that or lit later I could lit literally print over that. Now, if I wanted to add another color or a little bit more of an accent, I could take a brush and I don't want it to be sopping wet with the print paste. I want it to be a little bit of a dry brush, because if it's a dry brush, then when I add these marks, as sort of an accent, I can even go back into the yellow, all of those lines will stay, which is the whole point again. This is more about the print paste and the value of the print paste as it applies to printing with the MX dies, because of course I can always fold up the fabric and get color by manipulating the fabric and putting it in a dye bath. But a dye bath is of course just water and dye and some auxiliary chemicals. I can't get the sign of kind of clarity or the delineation that I can get when I use the print paste 
to thicken the dye. So if you're interested in MX dyes, or there are other varieties that you can use with the print paste, I hope you'll explore making print paste and doing some printing like this because the possibilities are endless.